Want to go far in business and in life? You can't do it alone. The secret is expanding your network of personal relationships, building friendships, connecting on an intimate level, away from the office, over a coffee or cocktail. Welcome to All In with the real Nate Payo. The show that asks what happens when you go all in and leverage the power of your network of personal relationships. From author Donnie Bovine comes the book, How to Be a Success Champion, available on Amazon. After years of living other people's dreams, author Donnie Bovine decided to jump out on his own and start a business, thinking it would be easy. Instead, he had a rude awakening and quickly understood that he had spent 20 years being an employee and had no idea how to be a business owner. His business was tanking, and he was on the brink of losing everything when he decided to fight for business freedom. In this must-read and life-changing book, author Donnie Donnie Bovine shares with readers his story intermingled with lessons learned from his mistakes and his failures. And how to be a success champion, you will find advice the author received from mentors and how he went from zero to a six-figure business. The author walks you through the steps of how to get out of your own way, how to play the game of business and win, find your strengths, how to network effectively, how to build a personal brand, how to create champions for your business, how to get great at sales, how to take complete ownership of you and your business how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon in both kindle and paperback editions order your copy right now it makes a great book for corporate events too how to be a success champion from author donnie bovine available on amazon Hello, hello. Welcome to the All In Podcast with Nate Payo. Of course, I am your host, Nate Payo. Today, my guest is Scott Aaron. Scott is an internationally acclaimed and award-winning online marketer, best-selling author, top podcaster, and speaker. He's a go-to specialist when it comes to converting traffic, establishing connections, and creating real residual income using LinkedIn and, uh, and building personal brands. Welcome to the show, Scott. How are you? Nate, awesome and uh, just a, an honor and a privilege to be here. Very cool. So LinkedIn is an interesting platform to say the least. I think um, it's it's one of those platforms where I've been on a lot. I've been on it for a long, long time, like but since like 2008 when it first came out. But more recently, it's it's the dynamics change. I think it used to be this, this place where you posted your resume and maybe you chatted with recruiters and headhunters if you're looking for a job or are you to post for jobs and people didn't really use it all that much. But I think recently, like the way I'm, I kind of describe it, it's like Facebook and Twitter without the shit show. Like it's Mm. this, it's like this conversational, like professional way of people posting and interacting with each other, but it doesn't get too polarizing with a bunch of like really far-fetched, you know, beliefs people have, or, you know, too much of like, Hey, look at what uh, my kids ate for uh, breakfast this morning. So LinkedIn's turned it into a pretty cool, pretty cool place to, you know, engage and, and connect with people. You know, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's basically, it's, it's social media without the bullshit. And what I mean by that is Facebook is a barbecue. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where people go to congregate. You know, you invite people over into your life. Let's hang out. What are you having for dinner? Where did you go on vacation? They show the, the social side of their life. Instagram is more of a reality TV show. That's where people go to look at other people's lives, wishing it was theirs. And like you, I signed up for a LinkedIn account probably back in 2009 and not for anything else, but it was a social media platform. I was on Facebook. I I was on Twitter and why not sign up for LinkedIn? And again, like you, I, I thought it was for recruiting 
and finding a job, which it was. It's the 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 beta platform of LinkedIn, the original platform of LinkedIn was for that. It was for job seekers. But something interesting happened in 2014, 2015. And that was with the acquisition by Microsoft to buy out LinkedIn. And why that was so important is because when Microsoft bought them out, obviously Jeff Weiner too, uh, playing a vital role in this, you know, the CEO of LinkedIn, they saw this as an opportunity to turn this platform into a networking juggernaut, which it is. Mm-hmm. It's the way that I describe it to people. It's a global networking event every single time you log on. You can connect with people all over the world. But the other thing I tell people is do not, don't, number one, don't treat it like Facebook and Instagram, just like you said. Do not put your before and after pictures. Don't sell. Don't pitch. You don't want to put, you, you want to keep things professional. So just to give me an example, I posted a video a week ago. And it was a little bit more of a personal video. I always do educational and informative videos about three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on LinkedIn. But over the weekend, you know, during the quarantine, it's it's a little bit different. You know, I I think every entrepreneur, every business owner has had a little bit more time to themselves than they're used to. And I started learning something that I've always wanted to learn, and that's to play the guitar. My my wife is uh, very musically talented. She she plays the guitar. She plays the piano. My, my son's gotten into the guitar and piano now. And I'm like, you know what? It's time for me to hop on board. So I, I've been learning how to play the guitar for the last month, month and a half. And I'm, I can play a couple songs now, which is really cool. And I recorded myself playing happy birthday. And I was mm-hmm. basically just saying happy birthday to my network, to those that were celebrating. Because, you know, LinkedIn, you know, tells you what people in your network are having birthday. But it wasn't about me just playing happy birthday on the, the guitar. It was the message I had in the the post, which was, it's never too late to learn something. And in life and in business, consistency always wins. When you're consistent with something, you'll achieve your goals. And that was the big message. It wasn't, say, it wasn't saying, hey, look at me. I can play the guitar now. There was a deep-rooted message behind that. The other thing is that it was Mother's Day a few weeks back. And I, I did a little dedication uh, post to uh, my wife, my sister, my mom, and my grandmother, the four most important women in my life. And I just wrote a little dedication message to all of them. And again, it was personal, but it was a, a very informative post paying homage and paying gratitude to the important people in your life. And the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything, whether it's personal business. And it got great response because it left people better. So what I've learned about LinkedIn is that people are on there to consume information, like you stated. They're on there to be educated and be informed. And as soon as people stop treating it like Facebook and Instagram, they're going to see the true power of it. I, I've created not only an incredible brand, but an incredible business on the backing of just showing up each day, looking to leave people better, having no expectation of a return, just literally doing things without any expectation. But, you know, Nate, you and I both know the more that you give, the more that you get. So that's my simple advice to people for LinkedIn. You know, it's a search engine. People are looking for you and you got to be on there in in a present fashion where you're educating and informing and not selling and telling. Yeah, I, I love how you described it as the networking juggernaut or this universal networking party because it, it's essentially that. And I think when you go in with the idea, like if you were going to go to a networking event um, in person, you wouldn't be, you know, flashing a bunch of stuff. You wouldn't yell, rock into the room and yell like, I sell stuff, buy it from me. I'm so awesome. Like you would go and you would engage. And, and I look at it this way, like when you go on LinkedIn, 
most people are on LinkedIn to meet other people. So, so right there, they are, I guess, a little bit more open to, to connecting with each other. But it doesn't mean you just bombard them with their stuff. It's just like a networking event. And if you went to somewhere, you would, you would join in in the conversation. So, so you, you either have a conversation starter or you go join somebody else's conversation. And that's what I think what's really powerful about LinkedIn that people don't realize is they go, hey, I'm on there and I don't know what to do. It's like the first thing, the easiest thing you can go do is go on, just go on some of the people's posts that you're following that you find interesting and like their post and like the people that are commenting posts that you find interesting. Because what it'll do is it'll sh- your name shows up in there and their notifications like so-and-so liked your post. And so you're building a little bit of intrigue. And then chances are people go and they say, hey, this person liked my post. Who are they? They go look at your post. And then they decide, hey, I have something of interest. Maybe I'll connect with you. And then you're having to connect it. Then it's also easy to just join the conversation is you can comment on somebody's post. You can comment on somebody else's comment. And it's just kind of like the first step a little bit bigger. Just like if you went to a, to a networking event, you saw a few people sitting there having a conversation, you might go and you might stand and nod your head and, you know, drop your two cents. And before you know it, you're having a conversation and you're in it with people. But it's also, I think like you described, it's a chance to showcase your expertise without selling. But, and this is what I really love about it now lately too, and this is exactly like what you did with your birthday song, is you don't have to treat it completely stuffy, sticky business, boring. I'm one dimensional Nate Pale. Like you go, Hey, this is what I'm an expert in. This is what my passions are. And people go, Hey, I like it. What this guy has to say, but then you drop and you say, I'm learning to play the guitar. Guess what? Maybe I was following you, Scott. And I was like, yeah, he's always kind of this message. I'm not really that jazzed about it, but Oh, you're learning to play the car. I'm learning to play the guitar. Like Maybe I'll comment on it. And like all of a sudden you, you find out like you have something in common with, with another person, you've developed a relationship. So I sit on the other side of the table. I, I'm, a, I'm a, in my nine to five job, I'm a professional buyer. So like I'm not out there always trying to sell, but people are, are usually trying to sell me. So I, I get a lot of incoming messages and DMs about, I, you know, I know what everybody's doing wrong. So I can tell people like, hey, if you want to connect with somebody you're trying to sell to, do exactly what Scott's saying is build this friendship relationship first, especially because a lot of these connections, at least for me, they don't happen overnight. If you send me a DM message, I'm not going to buy from you the immediate I get it. It's going to take probably a few years to develop a relationship that there's enough trust because the volume that I might buy is, is going to be pretty high. And it's not just a, a, um, a spontaneous decision. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of trust that has to be built and, and it's going to impact a lot of decisions going forward for the long term. So I think using LinkedIn to show who you are, cause this has worked a lot of times for me. Um, I started posting some, some things on LinkedIn that were personal to me. Some of the people that were trying to sell to me, they just reached out and they said, Hey, I've dealt and struggled with the same things you are. Guess what? Now I'm having a conversation with that person. I'm developing a friendship with that person. And then I'm like, Hey, what do you do? Oh yeah. You know, we, we could, there's a chance we could do business in the future. Let's, let's keep connected. And when the opportunity is right, we're going to, we're going to have a conversation and it might lead to something. So I think LinkedIn's a, just this fantastic tool that done, done right. Uh, which isn't that hard to do it right. Is, is, super powerful it's so i don't believe in the right way i just believe in a better way yeah and just like you said you know what i love about what i do it doesn't feel like a job because i get to connect with people all day long i get to build relationships with people you know gary vaynerchuk said something interesting last year He said, what people fail to recognize is your net worth is always in direct correlation to your network. So if you're not happy with your net worth, it probably means you don't have that big of a network. Mm -hmm. And those that are making significant impact and are making significant income have a large network. So what I've been focusing on the last seven years Everyone sees what I'm doing now. Everyone sees the success that I'm having. They see the two best-selling books. They see the speaking. They see the engagement that they're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. But there have been people that have been along the ride with me for the last seven years. I've been showing up 
every single day the same way since 2013. It's just some people are noticing me now. So you know the adage, you see the glory, but you don't know the story. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is that when you take consistent action every day, you know, showing up on the right platforms, using them the right way, you're going to start attracting the right people. But but again, people look at my social media. They look at the the 27,000 plus followers on LinkedIn. They look at the 28,000 plus followers on Instagram. They look at the 12,000 plus followers on Facebook. They, they look at all that and they're like, oh man, that must've happened overnight. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have Instagram five years ago. I just started using LinkedIn five years ago. I just started using Facebook to promote myself seven years ago. So it's taken that long. And I mean, it's gone, it's gone by like that, but you, you hear those numbers and you're like, oh my God, that's like 75,000 connections. Well, that's compounded. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, the, that's the daily habits and rituals. So we live in a society right now, not just in the United States, Nate, but you know, globally, we live in this society where we want instant gratification. We want to make all the money in the world right now. When you find a way to impact a ton of people, the money will then show up. Mm -hmm. And I've never been about the money. I, I knew that the, the more that I continue to move forward the right way on the right platforms, namely LinkedIn, I knew I would end up being successful. That's just the way that things work out. It's just everyone's looking for those quote unquote, those hacks and those shortcuts. You know, how can I hire someone to, you know, work the algorithm with me so I get a ton of engagement on LinkedIn to give the image that I'm successful and I know what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. That's not how you grow a business and that is not how you grow a brand. I love what you said. Your, your, your network is your net worth essentially because two things I, I, always preach is there's there's two things that people can't take away from you you can't be they can't be replaced like somebody else could learn your skills somebody else could well i'm going to defeat my argument but somebody else could do your job somebody else could do it a little bit better you could be replaced but your experience and your network can't be replaced and your experience is your education the things you've gone through in life and then your network is the people you know and the resources you have at your disposal and both of those take time to develop so you you can't just buy them overnight you can't buy experience overnight and you you can't buy a network of people you buy followers but you can't buy a network and when you said your network is your net worth it's not about like oh if i know a lot of people i'm going to make a lot of money what it essentially is i look at it as like you have a, a toolbox and your toolbox is providing value or solving problems or serving others. And the more people you can serve, the more problems you can solve, the more resources you have to solve these problems, the more valuable you are. And so it's not like, hey, I collected a thousand business cards. I'm going to get a thousand leads and people are get a thousand people are going to buy from me. No, what it really is, is now if I, if I meet 100, 150 people and I go, Scott has a problem. He told me about it. I know Joe over here has the solution, but Joe doesn't know Scott. I'm going to make that introduction. Now you're super happy. Joe's super happy. And then you just keep repeating that over and over. And people go, Hey man, that guy's got a lot of value. Like what, what are the things? But then you start getting exposed to other opportunities, other ideas, um, things. If you just kind of like didn't really work on your network, they're not going to, they're not going to show up on your doorstep. And so I just totally believe, like you said, networking, net worth, but it's not like you got to look at it a little bit differently. It's not collecting cards and shaking hands. It's really developing solid relationships and trying to serve the people you're connecting with. One of the first questions that I ask someone, if they set up a call with me to learn about how I can help them. First question, tell me about your business and what is your biggest need right now? Mm -hmm. That's because people will try to, I'll get on the phone with them. They're like, Scott, tell me how you can help me. Tell me what you do. I'll say, no, I need to first know about your business and what your need is. Because this, this goes back to sales 101. You know, if you want to learn how to close more sales, you have to find out how you can help that individual person. Mm -hmm. Because you have to customize every conversation 
to that person's need. Because how am I going to know how to explain what I do to that individual if they haven't told me what their problem is? So it's always about that person first and your per- and you last. That's the other thing. Yeah. But the the best businesses, and this is what I know now, the best businesses are built off of the backs of people that are in large quantities that are all having the same problem. Mm-hmm. And when you can develop a product, a good, or a service that fills the need or void and problem of those large amounts of individuals, guess what? You're going to impact a lot of people and you're going to create a great business. So think about in in business. I I mean, I talk about this with my wife all the time. We're always talking about what are people struggling with right now? Mm -hmm. And there's three common things that everyone struggles with in business. Number one, building their personal brand. They have actually, they have no clue how to do it. They just, they think they just got to post, you know, their website, go here, check me out. Like that's, that's not how you build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. Number two, they struggle with leads. They run out of people to talk to, you know, again, your net worth is in direct correlation to your network. And that's the thing, that little black book that we have, that little box of, of business cards only gets you so far. Your warm market gets you nowhere in today's market. Mm-hmm. And number three, being consistent. The reason why people don't succeed with their business is because they're double dutching it. They're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. And you have to stay in the game long enough for that compounded effect to take place. Treat your business like a 401k instead of a lottery ticket. Mm-hmm. And most people are treating it like a lottery ticket. You know, I'm, I'm going to make some posts and I'm going to get rich. No. If you think about a retirement fund, if you think about an IRA or a 401k, what, what does your financial advisor tell you? Listen, commit to making X amount of dollars a month deposits. And in the next 15 to 20 years, if you continue to do that, you know, with a base percent average growth, here's what your income could be at the end of this. So it's out of sight, out of mind. You just show up depositing every month into those accounts automatically without you even looking at it because at the end of it, time goes by like that as it always does and you've created that income that you deserve. Business is the same thing. So when you start treating it like a 401k instead of a lottery ticket, you will start showing up a much different way. That's so funny you said that. I was thinking that exact uh, same thought this morning because I was like, I was, I was working out and I haven't really been feeling it. And you, and you think about like a lot of people say, okay, Hey, I want to do something to improve my life. And you go, I'm going to take massive action. So imagine if you hadn't worked out for a while and you just went in and you said, I'm going to do this like crazy long two hour workout with tons of reps and tons of weights. Or you said, I'm going to go, um, invest in the 401k my, and put like, 90% of my money, like first day into it. And you're like, fuck yeah, we did it. And um, the next day you come out, you're like, you know what? This isn't sustainable. I don't feel like doing it. To, like, I don't have anything left in me today. And all of a sudden, like, it's not sustainable. So you give up, but you're right. It's about putting in just these little efforts. that maybe doesn't feel like a lot, but it's, it's every day. It's showing up every day, a little bit more. And then it compounds, it builds, you know, and, and it, it feels linear at first, but everybody that, that knows compound interest knows the power is as the acceleration. Once it starts gaining some some some, some momentum, it starts it starts doubling and tripling, um, and then that time frame to double and triple becomes shorter and shorter. And before you know it, you're like your hockey curve graph going up. Um, so that leads me to to my next question. Maybe you've you've kind of alluded to the answer already, but what do you believe um, in people being lucky? And what is your thoughts around the word luck? I don't believe in luck. Uh, I. I- there was a good portion of, of my life where, you know, they say things happen by accident, accidental. Uh, I believe there's a purpose behind everything. I think that w- there's no such thing as luck. We, we create the space for those things to happen. You know, I didn't get lucky on LinkedIn. I didn't. I was looking to solve a problem for my own business. I was looking to generate more conversations, more leads, more visibility. 
and in the process figured out a system. And it, it goes back to my upbringing of being in the wellness industry, writing diet plans and workouts for 18 <laughs> years. I, I was already a structured individual. So I, I had already worked that, that muscle within my business. And did I get on there early? No. I mean, LinkedIn was the first social media platform that ever came about between the, the, the first beta was 2000, 2001. I didn't open up my account until 2009. I didn't start leveraging it until 2015. So I didn't get lucky and I mm -hmm. don't believe any way. Like, think about this, going back to the whole lottery thing. What, what, what's the t statistic? And I think Nate, you know this answer. 75% of all people that end up winning the lottery within two years lose everything. Mm -hmm. Because again, they didn't have those monetary habits or disciplines when that money wasn't there. But now that it was there, nothing changed. What do they do? They spend it. Yeah. So I never believe in luck. I believe that we create our own opportunities by making new decisions. New decisions open up the door of opportunity. Whether people want to see it as luck, I don't. I see it as an opportunity. You open that door, you walk through, you never know what's on the other side, but if you don't walk through, you're never going to find out. Yeah, I, I love your approach to that too, of, of it, the opportunities, seizing them, being aware of them. I think, you know, people do go, you know, luck might happen in the sense like, you know, people do luckily win the lottery and, and they lose it and easy come, easy go. And there's a reason behind that is, is their why isn't strong enough. You know, it's like if they're wide for, for, if you, if you said, I want to have riches, but you didn't want to put the work effort into it, like then your why isn't that strong. So, so then if you got the money, your why isn't there that strong to, to do what you had in mind with it. So it's just, it just, it, it flows out of you easily. And I think a lot of people maybe start down a path of like, Hey, I'm doing a business or I have an idea because I, I want to make a bunch of money. But I think most people, get as they get going with it they they figure out their fulfillment comes from the the process the journey and and the reason why they keep going even when you say they've made it you know you've, you're making enough money that you don't need to necessarily work um people still go after it and they keep doing it because they just love what they're doing and just want to kind of keep chasing that process i mean look at elon musk when he, this is, this is an interesting story that a lot of people don't even realize. When, when he developed the technology for the Tesla, he said he, he believes in the, what I believe in, which is the science of getting rich mm -hmm. by Wallace D. Waddles. Great book. First money mindset book ever written, 1910. And it talks about living in a world of, of collaboration and creation instead of a world of competition and comparison. So when, when Elon when he developed this technology, he actually sent the blueprint for his technology to all of the major motor companies. Mm -hmm. He sent them a document. He sent it to the Honda Corporation, to, to GM, to all the big, and says, listen, I developed a technology that could help our environment. Here are the plans. Here's how you can do it. None of them took him up on it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't believe in... in Everyone sees what he's doing now. Do you know how how long it it uh, the 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 failures that he had to endure leading up to developing the technology for for Tesla? But everyone they're like, man, oh, he he's so lucky. He 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 just struck it big. When he launched Tesla, that was the compounded effect of all his failures that he had to learn how to succeed, and. You think about Apple and you think about all these, these conglomerates out there. You, you think they just like woke up one day and they're like, oh, I mean, go back to what Bill Gates and, and, and what, what all of those, all, all of those big thinkers did, you know, Bezos, they, you think Bezos knew, you know, Amazon, what's going to be today. I think he had goals and dreams and aspirations, but he started just like anybody else. He had a 600 square foot office mm -hmm. and look what it is now. So did he get lucky? 
I don't believe he got lucky. He seized an opportunity. He saw an opportunity that the internet was going to provide. And he said, you know what? I'm going to continue to try to figure this out. I'm going to continue to go all in. And the other thing, you know, a lot of people didn't know Elon Musk also created PayPal. He, he created one of the first money exchange platforms out there. So all of these people saw a need and a demand for something, and they just put action behind that thought and that idea and turned it into a business. Mm-hmm. I, I like your, your analogy with, with Elon. Um, there's a video. Well, first, I'm going to back up a little bit. So, so I've been reading Simon Simic's book, um, The Infinite Game, and talks about when you're in a win-lose mindset mentality, I'm trying to build something to put somebody else out of business. It's, it's a game of, of not innovation. It's, it's a short-term game. But when you're playing a game of a bigger why and a bigger goal in mind, so, so let's say you know, Elon Musk is developing Tesla or, or um, SpaceX to do these giant things of like put people on, the, on Mars or, or save the environment. He talks in his in, in a speech, he says, it doesn't really matter if I fail at this because what I'm doing is I'm laying the groundwork for somebody else to come in and pick up the baton and run with it. So somebody has to be first to kind of, if you want to do these really big, huge wise, like, like back in the season, they said, hey, we're going to put a man on the, mar- on, on the moon. There's so much innovation technology went into this massive, massive why of getting somebody to the moon that developed and spun off a lot of other technologies we probably probably use today. And, and I think, you know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos with with the the I forget his name of his company, Blue Sky or something, something to that effect. They like they're not in a win lose of like who's going to get to to Mars first. They're both setting a foundation of innovation and growth down this thing, this path that's going to be the stepping stones that others are going to build upon. So um, I think that's just so important of a mindset to have is is whether you're the best you know candy baker in your town or you're trying to put people on Mars, like. Your your goal in life should be to serve as many people as you can and help everybody else. If 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 we all can be better, then then we're gonna be better in ourselves too. So I think that's that's a huge thing to take. So my next question for you is this idea of being all in. What does all in mean to you on an idea or an outcome? Doing whatever is required to achieve your goals. And I, I you know, I, I've played poker. I know the the risk that uh, you take when you go all in, you got a 50-50 shot at that point because either that person you're going all in against, they're either going to have a hand to beat you or they're not going to have a hand to beat you. So when you go all in, you're going to be willing to take risks. You're going to be willing to fail a lot. You're going to be willing to learn from your mistakes. When you're all in, you will invest money in Uh, an opportunity. You will invest money in a coach that may not work out. Mm -hmm. You will be willing to go to events or whatever it is and and hire people that may or may not help you. And that's the thing. I was speaking to uh, a prospect a few weeks ago and we connected online and, uh, you know, they, they voiced to me how badly they wanted to succeed and how badly they saw value in what I, 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 I do and, and they want to work with me. But, you know, I got a text message two days later that they're still considering it, but they've spent and lost so much money on people that made false promises that they're hesitant to do anything else. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that person is not all in. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you that they have doubts that they can do it because do you know how many bad investments people have had in their career and things have still still worked out? I mean, I had to file for personal bankruptcy four years ago to enable myself to close my last business. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that as a failure. That, That showed my dedication and how all in I was to growing my personal brand outside of my brick and mortar. So being all in, it shows up in different ways. When people think all in, it, it's also creating healthy boundaries. 
you know, I'm all in with my brand. So you know what that means? I time block the shit out of my day. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything. My day began with our interview. Right. It, it's 10 a.m. Eastern. I haven't done anything for my business up until this point because I'm so all in with having mental clarity and having clear boundaries around my business and my personal life that I'm going to be very stringent with what I do. So all in means you are willing to do what is required, whether it works or it doesn't work, but you are always willing to move forward. You're not going to let those bad things, those the, the loss of money or the failures stop you from moving forward. You're going to learn a lesson from it and you're going to become better from it. And that way you're going to continue to move forward. That's what being all in means to me. Yeah. I think a lot of times, you know, I've been in that, that same boat before with um, coaches is, as you look, you say, Hey, you know, I, I hired somebody um, to do something and they, they promised things and, and they didn't deliver. And one, you learned, you learned from that because you're, you're going to be more cognizant and aware of who's a right fit for you if you want to bring in a coach or a mentor. And two, I think you have to also look at like what a coach does. If you're, if I, if I have a mindset of like, I want to hire a coach to tell me what to do um, and, and show up, like, I think your results are going to be mediocre. It's, it's like when you first go to the gym and you, you hire a coach, you don't know how to use the equipment. Like, okay, they can show you how to use equipment. You can learn the proper forms. You can learn the proper techniques, but it's in your heart. If you're going to show up every day and do the work and do the reps and progressively get better. And on the days you don't feel like doing showing up and going. And then as you become like maybe a little bit more experienced, you know what to do at the gym, you know what to do in business, but why would you go to a coach? You already know what to do. Well, the coach is there to tell you what you don't know what you're missing, what your weaknesses are, where you're, you know, they're, they're another set of eyes. They're not your friend and telling you like, rah, 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 you're doing so good. They're here to say, Hey, um, you know, I think you could have gone a little bit deeper on that last thing. So they're there to, to reach inside and pull what's already inside of you out and make you the best version. So you do have to kind of like, look at your past experiences. Um, and question, ask yourself, why did that not work out for me? And what would, what would be a, a mindset to have of something that will work out in the future? So if you're, if you're saying no to hiring a coach, that's okay if your no is right. But if you're saying I'm scared or, you know, then, then you might want to check, question your beliefs a little bit more and, and really ask yourself, are you all in? So that, that's, a, that's a really good analogy there. And just remember, a coach is a guide. You know, they're, they're, they're not your babysitter. And mm -hmm. that's the thing. I always tell my clients, if you follow what I teach you, you will see results over time because what I teach is what I do every single day on LinkedIn. So I know it works because I do it every day. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people that end up not seeing results, I end up getting back on the phone with them. And I said, are you doing X, Y, and Z? And they're like, you know what? No, I stopped mm -hmm. or I'm not doing this or I need to do more of that. You know, it's the, the way that I describe my, my system and my technique and strategy is a recipe. Y you can try to figure out the meal and the ingredients that are in that meal from the chef, or you can just go pay the chef to write down the recipe and the ingredients and the exact measurements so it comes out right. Mm -hmm. you, you forget one ingredient. Guess what? That recipe is ruined. <laughs> it's, it, it, and it won't taste the same. Mm -hmm. You forget one egg, you forget one drop of something. It's not going to taste right. And it's the same thing with what I teach on LinkedIn. You leave one ingredient out, it topples over. And if you want to learn how to succeed, you follow the steps of people that have already paved the path. That's what I said to this person the other day. I said, listen, I've already paved the path. You just got to walk alongside of me. I don't want mm. you to follow me. I want you to walk, walk beside me to learn what I'm doing every day to build my business. And that's mm -hmm. the big difference. Yeah, I think you're right there. Like it's, it's a recipe. It's not, I think everybody thinks like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm all jazzed up. I'm going to do all these things and it's just going to be explosive growth. And it's like, 
No, it's actually kind of boring. It's actually kind of just showing up every day and doing the same thing every single day over time and it builds results. And then you're going to get the results you want and that and it's going to start getting that excitement that 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 burning desire you're after, but it's it's definitely a lot of repetition. So you talked a bit about the the people you work with. Can you describe if if I'm out here listening, um, and I and I wanted to identify with you as a coach, who is who is who is this avatar of the ideal person you want to work with? It's an entrepreneur, business coach, online marketer, someone that has a business that res- revolves around. Uh, building their personal brand. They provide a good, a service, a program that serves other people. Uh, They have high ticket offerings. They are looking to build communities and cultures, and they are tired of spending a lot of money on Facebook and Instagram ads getting nowhere. And they want to learn how to organically build a network that could increase their net worth. That is the best client for me. Very cool. So if somebody wants to work with you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can go to my website, www.scotteron.net. That's two T's and two A's. And you can also find me on social media under Scott Aaron on LinkedIn and on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is at Scott Aaron LinkedIn. Awesome. All those links will be on uh, the show notes. So please go out, reach out to Scott, connect with him. Um, Just follow him on LinkedIn for a bit. Just see what he's got going on. I think, uh, you know, sometimes just watching what people are up to gives you a feel for if they're right fit for you. And and you're going to probably say, hey, you know, this guy's doing some cool stuff. Um, I want to know a bit more and uh, connect with him and engage in a conversation with him and just see where it goes. That's one of my mottos is like with networking is just, just go, just put your, Put your foot out there. Get get a conversation going. You don't. You never know who's going to be that one person you meet that's going to make a huge difference in your life, or vice versa. You might make a huge difference in someone else's life. So be open to connecting with, you know, anybody. You never know. That's that's what my my advice is with with the networking. So very cool having you on, Scott. I think you had a lot of great insight and wisdom to share. Um, I'm sure you got a lot more that uh, to offer your clients in just this, this brief conversation. So. Great connecting with you for sure. You too, Nate. Again, uh, you know, appreciate you and thank you for the opportunity to come on today. Awesome. Thank you. Make sure to visit our website, therealnatepayo.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of All In. While you're at it, if you found value, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or if simply tell two friends about the show. Looking to connect? You can find Nate Payo on LinkedIn or Instagram.